Okay, great. Uh, so it looks like we've got quite a few people in and we can probably get started. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? How was your break? You know, Christmas, New Year's, give us a little update. What were you, what were you getting into? Uh, it was pretty good. Um, managed to spend a lot of time with my family. Also went to uh, DeFi Con in Brooklyn. Got to meet some fellow DGens. And yeah. Uh, Amazing. Caught COVID in New York. So uh, that was a... Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my. Are you doing okay now? Yeah. It was sound pretty good. It was just a sore throat for me. I didn't really feel much from it. But then come to find out it's COVID. So, yeah. Rough. Um, yeah, that's what's up. It kind of just kind of comes out of nowhere. But no, glad to glad to, that you've made it through the other side. Um, and I've been seeing quite a lot of new releases for Olympus. So I think maybe if we can just dive in and get started with uh, with a bit of a synopsis about what you guys have released. And you know, we saw the Olympus Pro program kind of ramp up a little bit. The the V two bonds. G ohm, like it seems like there's quite a few different things going on. Um, this new debt facility, maybe you could give us a quick rundown. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, basically, for Olympus Pro, we kind of hit the end of the year pretty, pretty hard. Ended up adding, I think, at the end of October, we had about 15 partners, and by mid December, when we uh, shut down adding new partners, we had ramped up to 45 across, um, I think, four different chains between Ethereum, wow. Phantom, Avalanche, and Arbitrum. So it was a pretty, pretty big one. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. I think the, the Olympus Pro program has been has been quite a good success. Um, I think one thing that we love uh, at StakeDAO internally, and, and actually our community really values, is something which Olympus has done really well which is around transparency, communication, and community building. Um, I guess one of the questions which we did get around Olympus Pro was how you guys are integrating those partners, of course, us being one of them, into the Olympus ecosystem. You know, we hear quite a lot about the economy. Like, uh, we were just wondering what that means for you guys at Olympus and perhaps how that translates to our our herd. Yeah, absolutely. So... I think one of the things right off the bat on Olympus Pro is, you know, we had staked out, uh, join as like one of our first partners. And in that time, we've actually expanded to at least one chain that uh, staked out is also on with another set to launch somewhat soon. So I'm thinking, you know, we can explore some options moving forward about, you know, cross chain OP for staked out as well as, um, kind of some exciting topics that we've discussed around our bonds v2 and maybe setting up a bond marketplace um, I, I know that's one thing that we had discussed Hitachi, and i think that's still a pretty exciting one but um yeah would love to talk about that more if you have any thoughts on bond yeah marketplace. i think uh, i think you touched on a, a really quite quite an exciting point actually so like First of all, bond marketplace. What what does that mean for the the DGens among us? If you could describe it in one sentence, um, yeah. So basically, it's an alternative marketplace for selling Olympus bonds, and not just on our own front end. We kind of took a page from Liquidity with their front end rev sharing, and are trying to see if we can actually expand our marketplace to different partners who can capture a share of bonds sold from Olympus. Oh, wow. Okay. So that would mean that all partners get an interest in all partners bonds. Uh, yes, essentially. So the, the Olympus pro version, I think is still a little bit farther on the horizon, but I think um, the shorter term one will be Olympus bonds being offered on different platforms. Mm, mm, that's that's really interesting so do you do you envision a future where this this kind of i guess touches on a few interesting points which olympus has been diving into with with some of its uh i guess forks with around like meta governance and like cvx accumulation and you know the curve wars fxs etc um what what's your kind of vision in in two months 
down the line? What do you what do you hope to see? So, you know, we just ended up completing our migration for Olympus. And so I think one of the things we'll see in the near future is we actually had Bonds V2 launch this past Saturday. And so this is an okay. Yeah, this is like an upgrade on our bonds and happy to get into that as well. But in the future I see like these bonds being sold not just on our website, but also on aggregators, on key partners like StakeDAO. Um yeah. Okay. So well the one, I guess there's there's a couple of different points I want to touch on there. So one, it would probably see an uptick in the acceptance of Olympus bonds across different partner projects. So they offer it through their own UI. Yes, exactly. Okay, wow, that's that's pretty exciting. I think I think we'd definitely be uh, welcoming that on the stake DAO side. You know, um, we do already offer a, a, a multitude of services, but I think definitely that could be something which would be very interesting. And and the V two bond. So what's the what's the key difference between V one and and V two? So there's. One key difference, which, you know, we had discussed previously, Hitachi, where um, for staked DAO Olympus Pro Bonds, um, the payout is in the staked version. Yes, yes, XSDT. Yes. And so we actually took a page uh, from that playbook. You know, we had had those discussions previously, but um, we also saw that as being an improvement on uh, traditional bonds and so we pay out in the staked version uh, which okay. kind of saves users gas fees yeah yeah that's very exciting yeah and um and then on top of that there's also some dynamic adjustments that happen on the protocol side so that it's a little bit less of a manual process um, and you know you're familiar with how bonds work for OP and how manual it is, a lot of this actually improves the user experience from the protocol perspective. Okay. No, that's a, that's definitely, I think, I think uh, an underappreciated perhaps improvement. Um, just to give like a quick synopsis for those of you watching which aren't perhaps familiar with Olympus Bonds, essentially uh, Olympus have created a service to uh protocol-owned liquidity for everyone. So protocol-owned liquidity as a service, I guess. Um, and essentially, they onboard you. It's a, I have to just take a moment to thank you guys because it was a very, very smooth experience. I think we can pretty safely say the stake DAO uh, protocol-owned liquidity bonds have been, have been fairly successful. So it's this idea that users would provide liquidity on a DEX like SushiSwap and take the LP token that they receive in exchange and bond it, i.e. exchange it, for whatever token, in our case, XSDT, at a progressive discount set by the market. And I think if you've not seen it already, you know you can go check out Olympus Pro, uh, and you'll see a whole bunch of, of different protocols integrated there. Um, I think although the, the protocol experience for us was already very smooth, um, uh, owing a lot to, I think, tax yourself and, and your team being so professional. Um, but beyond that, I think if there's any, any improvements, yeah, we're certainly really keen to, to learn more and, and, and use those. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think this year we're going to be spending quite a bit of time on looping back for partner success on mm. Olympus Pro. So a lot of this involves making sure that uh, community members with our partners are aware that, you know, A, that these bonds exist, that they can actually measure the return on investment relative to native staking options for our partners' mm -hmm. tokens. Mm -hmm. And then also kind of identifying when some partners are having, you know, issues either due to... Um, maybe lack of community engagement, maybe token prices declined a bit, um, a lot of issues that are top of mind given the yeah. last you know week or so. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, um, and I think Olympus has also really been feeling it as well. But um, yeah, this is going to be one of our biggest focuses for going into the year because we did see towards the end of last year a few partners' uh, bond programs 
um, kind of run into some issues during the holiday season. And then there was a retrospective done by Pool Together that has kind of been making the rounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, I think we can probably touch on that, actually. In in terms of partner success, I think I think you also spoke about what value this provides as against the traditional or the 2020 way of doing things, so to speak, which is around liquidity mining incentives. Um, so I guess one of the, for, for those who haven't read the, the uh, pulled together report, one of the things which was noted for some pro uh, partners was that there were bots essentially, I guess, bonding and then selling and then rebonding with those profits kind of un- until it was a it was a net zero kind of gain for for the protocol themselves so it, what are the kind of like solutions i know you spoke about a marketplace already we've kind of heard things about leverage on bonds and you know all of these weird kind of new concepts bringing around like spoons instead of forks um could yeah. you maybe could you maybe expand a little bit about that it feels like the the olympus econ- ecosystem is growing really really quickly so um, it's it's hard to keep up at times. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely an interesting kind of experience reading through um, some of the comments that the pull together program ran into, and I think a lot of it comes down, you know, as usual in DeFi, as to coordination problems. So, like one of the features that you know, we have for partners is just a very simple discord bot that keeps track of the discounts on their bonds. And I know you guys have this, uh, discord bot active on the state DAO discord. Oh yeah. Um, and honestly we find that partners who actually integrate this particular bot and it's a very simple feature, but it kind of calls attention to when there are large discounts and kind of advertises to community members, who are the most active on Discord? Mm-hmm. Um, that Who in turn are likely to be bonding. Yes, exactly. And so, I think what we ran into with Pool Together specifically is that I think they were dealing with a lot of issues related to, um, you know, right around the same time we launched bonds for Pool Together, we also kind of noticed that they had that lawsuit kind of pop up. There was a lot of issues on that. I think distracted from the positive communication narrative around bonds, as well as seeing a token price decline that started almost immediately after Mm -hmm. initiating that program. So a lot of stuff got lost in the noise and that even filters down to um, having implemented a Discord bot that then never found its way to their community. And a lot of that, honestly, is on us for not noticing that that had happened. Because meanwhile, I think I think it's that bias to focus on positive aspects rather than, you know, dealing with some hard problems like, hey, this partner is facing a a really big problem with their token price. So I I think that's one way to look at it. And then I think we also have a commitment to build out better analytic tools for bond Mm -hmm. programs so that uh, partners can monitor more in real time instead of uh, currently the process for reviewing that data is very manual. Yeah, yeah. No, we've seen some uh, gene analytics board, you know, using using events um, to see how the redeem transactions are going and etc. But yeah, that sounds that sounds really promising that you guys are actually going to provide that as a service. Um, I think one of the one of the cool things which I've been seeing on Twitter, which I don't know if it's true or not, um, is around like this idea of geom and and going cross chain and ve ohm that's uh kind of on the cards i'm wondering if you can expand on that a little bit for us i think i think the ve ohm idea is more an idea that andre uh cooked up so Mm -hmm. i honestly haven't delved that deeply into that one but um in terms of geome and cross chain we do have a an initiative that is currently live called proteus 
where we're essentially taking geom, which represents a claim on SOM. It's just a wrapped version of it so that you can actually take this token and move it cross chain. And if users end up migrating back to mainnet, they can redeem it for the staked collateral ohm, which continues rebasing, even though the geom token is cross chain. So it solves one of the biggest issues with rebasing tokens and chain migrations. Mm -hmm. And so currently we have uh, liquidity mining incentives live on Avalanche, Phantom, Polygon, and Arbitrum. Okay. And uh, so users in these low fee environments can more easily access um, staking with Olympus by purchasing Geo. Okay, that's that's quite exciting. So I think I think the next question is where where, where do I stake my Geo? Oh, um, that is kind of the good thing about it is it is already staked. Oh, okay, okay, very nice. Um, so, and I, I think I think one of the things which you have been putting out from the Olympus side is this vision of of Olympus cross chain. You know, I think you mentioned Avalanche. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you guys are expanding to some other chains as well. But do you do you envision a future with this with this bond marketplace where you're selling bonds for one chain on a different chain? Would that be possible with Geo? Um, that may be possible. Um, there's a lot of complexities here in in terms of we actually need to know the amount of assets that exist on Ethereum mainnet for our treasury in order to effectively mint new geom to be sold for bonds. Um, but just to linger on the distinction between the different tokens we have, because this was kind of a, a big pain point that I think a lot of people ran into during the migration. So there's still OM and SOM, which is staked OM. And that allows you to gain access to rebases. And so if you hold SOM in your wallet, uh, the quantity of SOM increases with rebases. The GOM token solves a lot of issues with rebasing tokens. So if I actually take SOM and move it cross chain on Avalanche, it actually that token on Avalanche will not actually continue rebasing and expanding its supply like it would if it existed on Ethereum. And so Geom solves this by basically wrapping the increasing quantity in a static token that just represents a claim on an increasing amount of SOM that it represents. So it's a little complicated, but the short of it is basically one G ohm represents if you had bought one ohm when Olympus launched and staked it until today, that's the value that you would have had. Um, and just as a as a fun fact here, um, G ohm right now is trading at just close, just under twelve k, and you know the. Whoa. Olympus price on launch was, I think, I think it was around uh, four hundred dollars. Amazing! So yeah. there's a there's a lot of very um, uh, in, enamored supporters. You're saying for Olympus? Yeah, I think that's the power of rebases and um, you know having a high premium on the token. So yeah, but very interesting. Even as we see. Uh, token price collapsing over the past two days yeah definitely so i think i think one of the things we've seen um that not only olympus but quite a few others are, are very susceptible to is this uh cascading liquidations that that tend to occur mm -hmm. on on any kind of major moves and we've seen a couple of you know interesting projects come out of the Olympus ecosystem related to stable coins and, and minting and 0% interest. And we're just wondering if you could expand a little bit what your thoughts are around the Olympus ecosystem and lending. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question because I think 
the issue of cascading liquidations has been kind of top of mind for me for several months. And we finally saw one event happen October 15th. And then we saw another one happen yesterday, where during both of these cases, a lot of people had leveraged their Olympus holdings to borrow stable coins and purchase more <laughs> Ohm. And for example, in Ave Compound or Rari with uh, our Fuse pool there, um, these platforms allow you to take a loan against your collateral with the assumption that if it reaches a certain threshold, that collateral is then auctioned off. And one of the really interesting improvements upon this collateral auction model is kind of the model that liquidity pioneered with LUSD. And so having a stable coin that uses geome as collateral, which there are a few actually in the works, uh, one from Olympus, and then one that's kind of been making the rounds on Twitter called Vesta. Mm, um, yes. Yeah. So, you know, shout out to Vesta for this one. I think they're planning on having collateral types of Geom, ETH, and some flavor of Bitcoin. And this will all be launching on Arbitrum, but it essentially allows you to take out a loan against that collateral and have redemptions take place via the stability pool mechanism that liquidity pioneered so hopefully there will be fewer um, liquidations in that sense and yeah that's that's quite exciting and uh, i mean as as you mentioned before you know there's quite a few people who have who have gained in, in monetary terms from uh being part of of the olympus um community in that sense, if you if you let them unlock their liquidity, there'll be a lot more funds around for um, DeFi, so to speak, and and maybe even NFTs. How how powerful do you think this could be for not only Olympus but but the entire ecosystem? For having a stable coin that you can leverage using Geo, exactly. Yeah, I think I think it'll be really important because a lot of people. There is a lot of appetite, for example, for these loans. And having a scenario where you see these cascading liquidations that just wrecks token price mm. is pretty painful. And then it kind of also having a stable coin that's based on Olympus's holdings also gives Olympus as a platform an alternative mechanism to actually take some of the own that we hold and actually create stable coins with it further thickening our liquidity that one's a little unclear if we'll pursue that route but it the optionality is pretty powerful yeah definitely and it's it's all about being able to pivot right um i am wondering though it is there i guess like after lending the the next natural step is is deploying that liquidity and I'm wondering if there's any conversations around onboarding strategic partners that could provide uh, solutions to deploying liquidity, for example, on top of Curve, like some of the strategies which we offer, or somewhere like Convex. Um, is Are those kind of conversations going on in the Olympus ecosystem at present? Yeah, currently, um, we do actually have a some of our liquidity deployed through Convex specifically for Frax uh, being kind of one of our initial partners. I think we both kind of launched around the same time and have kind of grown as part of the you know DeFi 3.0 narrative, mm. which is funny in its own respect. But um, yeah, no, we, we do have plans to examine how to deploy liquidity on Curve for any any new stable coin that rolls out like you know whether that's you know supporting vesta actually take control of you know some curve pool or whether that's ousd which is the olympus in-house version um yeah 
all very exciting stuff to watch in 2022. And I imagine that both of these will probably be live towards end of Q1, maybe Q2. So, yeah, well, that's that's really exciting. Quite soon as well. Um, so I think before we get into questions, uh, just want to leave the floor open in case there's anything that you wanted to give a special shout out to. And in the meantime, if anyone that's on the call would like to ask a question, they can just re request and we'll bring them on board. But yeah, Tex, floor is yours. Two minutes to say something about anything you're into. Um, yeah, honestly, I mean, shout out to you guys for being one of our initial Olympus Pro partners. I think that a lot of people would not appreciate, I think, just a lot of the questions that came up when we were proposing Olympus Pro as a marketplace and new bond platform for generalizing partners' liquidity. I think mm. having seen its success in retrospect, it's fairly obvious. But at the time, I think it did require more of a leap of faith. And um, I mean, just it really did kick off quite a bit of liquidity as a service models where, you know, you see Faye, Ondo, mm. um, Frax, Reflexer with their Rye token. They're now all offering liquidity as a service. And I think a lot of it was kind of initiated with um, Olympus Pro and demonstrating that there is an appetite for this from a protocol perspective and you know being one of our very first launch partners was super powerful and just kind of wanted to thank you guys and your community i it looks like you know stake dow has accumulated just north of a million dollars worth of liquidity on our platform and i think yeah that's right for the particular point in time where that launched i i think you know really it's worth emphasizing how powerful that was to have you on board as one of our initial partners yeah, no, definitely. And we were we were really glad to to be part of that journey with you guys. I think it, it seems like forever ago when we when we initiated those conversations uh, way back when. And I guess for everyone on the call, actually, one of the one of the staked out community members who was part of both communities was the one who who set the wheels in motion for that. So hopefully that can be a source of inspiration for for some of the people on this on this call. Um, so just get into a couple of questions. Uh, I've got one here, which is asking about the deployment of liquidity. Um, so they're just asking, does Olympus plan to utilize strategy? Uh, yeah, does does Olympus plan to use um, strategy creators such as StakeDAO, Yearn, and Convex in their future deployment? Yes, I think that so far we've leaned towards convex um just having a couple of our members of treasury who are kind of community members of convex has kind of steered the ship in that direction um as well as kind of accumulating some amount of convex via bonds to end up boosting our own liquidity pools but that is one thing that that we've considered um in terms of deploying liquidity. Okay, amazing. Um, yeah, no, that's really exciting. Uh, we've got another one, which is around NFTs. And they're asking if Olympus is ever going to enter the NFT space. Um, Olympus kind of is tangentially in the NFT space. We have a, we actually have a couple related projects. There's Incum, which kind of has these NFT uh kind of like a deck of cards almost that actually has ohm embedded in the nfts and kind of your claim on the underlying ohm depends on what kind of poker hand you have which is pretty nifty oh okay and then and then our big one is odyssey and i think a lot of the development work on that platform was kind of occurring in the background over you know second half of 2021 but basically having a platform where Olympus actually sells NFTs denominated in Ohm is something I would expect in the near future. And then oh, we wow. also okay. have some, Yeah, and then Watch we also have some in, Yeah, exactly. Um, and then we have some interesting uh, ecosystem partners, whether that's um, Treasure on Arbitrum, who kind of has you know some interesting NFT projects. 
that they do as well as, you know, with Olympus Pro, we launched with them, with Blackpool. Um, I would say that we're kind of tangentially in the NFT space, but looking to expand our footprint there. Amazing. That sounds really exciting. And actually, we've, uh, we've just come to time. So you, you, you timed that perfectly. I uh, just want to say you shout out. Thank you for joining us uh, to everyone and especially to you, Tex. Uh, I'll just let you kind of have the floor in case there's anything you want to say before we wrap up. Um, no, I mean, really just, you know, honored to be invited here for the January campaign oh yeah and that's what's up <laughs> yeah always always love talking to you atashi and really looking forward to see how our communities can collaborate moving into the new year it's really hard to imagine like you mentioned you know way back when when we discussed you know setting up a bond program that was uh four months ago so <laughs> time moves four months is like 10 years here. in DeFi, man yeah, it's it's crazy. So just really looking forward to see. We basically have three times that length for 2022, and I just can't imagine what we're going to build this year. It's it's going to be great. Yeah, it's so exciting. Um, sorry, we've just got one one final question. Are you guys going to be coming to Barcelona? Ooh, um, maybe. Oh, okay, very mysterious. Um, yeah. Great. I think I think we can end there. Um, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. And remember to watch out for the recording on the Staked Out YouTube. Uh, huge shout out to you again, Tex. Thanks for joining.